Hoop7 proudly brings to you Basketball Hustle, featuring your host, the writer, Chris Pike, and the scoring machine, Sean Redditch. Now it's time for another episode of Hoops Heaven's Basketball Hustle. Hello and welcome to a special grand final edition of Hoops Heaven's Basketball Hustle. Once again, a replacement for the scoring machine, who I'm sure you won't complain about. And later on in the show, we'll also have the nightmare Matty Knight joining us for a full grand final preview. Let's get straight into it. I'm Chris Pike and the replacement not only on this show for Sean Redditch, but it appears he's now the full-time replacement on the TV coverage. Damien Martin, uh, how excited down, are down, you down. for the grand final? I'm sure Sean just got uh, plans already for tonight and <laughs> Sunday. And they've called me up as a backup, but no, I am excited to be calling the game uh, for you know, both games one and two, both being played here in Perth, obviously. So I can't wait to get out there tonight, be courtside, and see. I mean, late mail is Louis Timms is out. Oh, Louis Timms. Louis Timms. <laughs> Luke Travis, a different LT. Luke Travis is out, and, you know, Nordo's 50 50. So. Yeah, you know, without Bryce already, it was going to be tough enough. If Norto's out, you know, very, very hard to expect him to be able to pull off a, a win over the minor premiers. Uh, but yeah, Luke Travers, from all accounts, won't be suiting up tonight. You must be reading my mind, Damo. Five minutes ago, before we started recording this, I was writing my Perth Redbacks preview for this weekend, and I was just writing about Lewis Timms. <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw him uh, yesterday or two days ago at Loftus shooting. Yep. And so, yeah, I must have just had LT in my, in my <laughs> ball with, with the wrong LT. So, yeah. no, Louis Sims was a you know, hell, of a, hell of an athlete uh, and still looks like he's quit the fiddle and playing some good basketball. Yeah, still doing well in the, in the NBL one right now. But now I want to play this to you, Damo, before we get into this show. Take a listen to how you welcomed us to the TV coverage back on, back for game three. Travis. <laughs> Oh, hang on. <laughs> yeah, no, it's safe to say I have. It's uh, oh, the on. power of the perm, the magic of the mullet. It's all about Luke Travers out west today. Look out the Premier Mark oh, McGowan. No. We've got a new sheriff in town. It's Luke Travers straight out of Rockingham. <laughs> so that was how you welcomed us. And now, as you said, breaking news ahead of Friday night game one. He's not going to be playing. Uh, I hope I didn't put the mocker on him by wearing his training <laughs> singlet and putting on a wig and, and introducing him the way I did. But... He has been fantastic. You know, he's 19, that's the thing. And some people are like, oh, you getting way too caught up in that. Sure, he played well, but he's not, you know, been incredible. I'm like, he is. He's 19. He is incredible what he's been doing. And obviously, he started a little bit slower in game three against Illawarra. But that fourth quarter pulls down a rebound, goes full length of the court, dunks on Harvey. Yeah. Name many other. I can't think of any other 19 year olds who one would be out there in that situation for a, you know, series defining moment uh, and lose you go home win your best grand final at single digits less than a minute to go and he makes that play that was just phenomenal backing up after games one and two where he was you know almost the Wildcats best player in both games absolutely now very quickly let's go back to your thoughts on those two semi-final series so Perth versus Illawarra the Hawks won game one in Perth 74 to 72 and then Game two in Wollongong, amazing atmosphere. It was fantastic to see, but the Wildcats 79-71 to and then back at RSC Arena on Monday night and the Wildcats won 79-71 to once again. Same scoreline. Um, to me, the story was Mitch Norton and his, and his defensive performance to do it on, on almost one leg and showed why you won the Demo Award last week as well as, the, as your best defensive player. Didn't quite get that same award at the NBL Awards night, but... What did you make of that series in the end? Oh, defensively, it was just, it, it really was a pleasure to watch courtside commentating the game. And there's a few times where I know when there's a timeout, I've got the easiest job in the league. All I have to do is sit in on the timeouts and report back what the <laughs> coaches said to the viewers back home. But there was actually a few timeouts where I was just so caught up in having watched the previous possession. I'm then watching, you know, a fatigue sign and walk back to his bench. A Nordo who's knackered on one leg walked back to his bench. And then I forgot to do my role of then going standing in, in on the uh, <laughs> time out and report it back. Those two guys, if the Hawks were to advance to the grand final, is off the back of Justin Simon and the defense he played. Now, yep. don't get me wrong, he's putting points on the board, in particular yep. in game one as well. But his defense was incredible. And then Mitch Norton, that fourth quarter, that third and fourth quarter, 
with some of the most inspirational basketball I've ever seen. And, and that's not just because he was injured. In mm. general, if he was fully fit, that was inspirational. Mm. So that way you know if that was regular season, he doesn't play. It's as clear cut as that with how serious his injury is. Battling through injury, battling through pain, the team's down, deciding game on your home court. There's that one possession for me will define that series. And that's when Dan Greeter is standing close to the ball. It should have been the Illawarra Hawks possession. Dordo comes flying out of nowhere, dives straight on the mm. ground, picks it up, throws it to his teammate. Now the Cats go to the other end and score. Yeah. And that's final basketball. It's who's willing to do that. It's, it's not just implementing a game plan. It's not just names on a piece of paper to see who's got more skill. It's the willingness to make those massive plays because the game is decided by so few points that every possession is so crucial and you've got to be willing to make massive plays. And I just thought at both ends of the core, whether it's two, three pointers he hit, you know, he gets an M1, gets to the free throw line, and then those defensively, he was just phenomenal. So, yeah, Norto was, I know Blanchfield went for 21 in the first yeah, half, yep. and he freeze and they stayed in the game. But, yeah, Norto, that second 20 minutes, absolutely incredible. And, and a game I'll never forget. I just thought both defenders were amazing. But Norto somehow went to another level. Yeah, totally agree. Now, the other series was fascinating as well. Melbourne United beat the South East Melbourne Phoenix in game one, 96 to 78. But then the Phoenix turned it around. They won game two, 90 to 79. And in game three, the Phoenix were up by 17 during the second quarter. And, and it really did look like they were on track to get to the grand final. But Jock Landale ended up putting United on, on his back and, and got them through 84 to 74. What did you make of that series? Yeah, I, to be honest, I thought Melbourne United was going to do it not comfortably, but after game one, I thought, oh, look, they'll go and close this out. Obviously, there's no home court advantage right. for the team. Uh, it's just going to come down to who is better, and I thought Melbourne would be better. And then, obviously, you know, what Sykes did in game two, obviously, like just the guys stepped up at the right time, and in particular in the fourth quarter, they had the final run. And basketball is a game of runs, and when it's so tight, sometimes it does come down to who had that final run, and, and that was South East Melbourne. But going into game three, Again, I tipped Melbourne United, but when South East built that double-digit lead and got it out to yeah, 16, 17 points at one stage, I thought, wow, I don't think many people would tip a Bryce Cotton-less Wildcat versus South East Melbourne to be the final after the semi-finals were revealed. So, no, there was some great basketball played at both ends, and it took Jock Landau getting in a zone. He said he's never felt that way. It was just an incredible moment, an incredible game for him, and you know, another reason why I hope to see him in the example why I hope to see him in the NBA next year. He is just a very, very good player and going to be an absolute nightmare for Mooney, for Magne, for whoever guards up on him in this year. Absolutely. And oh, I think he's getting very much right in the mix to book himself a spot at the Olympics too, so so he's right in line yeah. for that. Let's keep I, moving. I agree. I think I'd have him in my starting. I'd actually yeah, start him absolutely. alongside Mooney as, as my big stage. So I've obviously got nothing to do with the coaching selection, <laughs> but when that squad was announced, uh, I went through, picked my 12, and, and then I went to uh, my starters, and yeah, I don't mind admitting I have job starting big man. <laughs> yeah, no, totally agree. Just quickly, how scary was it when Brian Gorgian came to you at halftime in that game three and didn't want you talking to Sam Froling? <laughs> it's, uh, it's one of those things that I absolutely love how competitive Gorge is. Mm. He's in every single moment, every single possession. And so he clearly wanted his players back in that locker room. He had some things to say, and I was not <laughs> going to argue. <laughs> so we ended up doing one interview with yep. Blanchfield, and uh, instead of it being the two like we'd originally hoped for, we uh, politely threw it back to the commentators in the booth <laughs> and moved on. <laughs> okay, let's whip through the award winners from the NBL Awards on Wednesday night, and I'll get your, get your reaction. Firstly, the Damien Martin Trophy went to Justin Simon of the Hawks. Most improved player, also from the Hawks, Sam Froling. The best six man, Joe Lawal Achul. Rookie of the year, Josh Giddy from the 36ers. Then the all second team, a very small all second team, which I'm looking forward to talking to Matty Knight about later. I think he might dominate this team if he was playing against them. Mitch Creek, Finn Delaney, Chris Golding, Casper Ware, and Mitch McCarron. The all first team, which I think was pretty much universal. Tyler Harvey, Bryce Cotton, Nathan Sobey, Jock. Landale and John Mooney, Coach of the Year Trevor Gleeson, MVP Bryce Cotton. What stood out to you about all of that, Damo? Oh, look, to be honest, there was no real 
standout. I think uh, everyone was deserving of either their award or their selection. You know, obviously, I selected Nordo in the, the awards I was doing after every round mm. and came down to one point. That's how close yeah. I had Nordo and yep. Simon. I was surprised, though, by the margin that Simon beat Abercrombie by, and Abercrombie was ahead of Nordo. So that, that did surprise me. Yep. And, yeah, but anyway, in particular, you know, you voted by captains and coaches. It's not game by game. So, obviously, Abercrombie missing the last portion of the season didn't hurt him with how they did it for the NBL mm. Awards, opposed to me doing week to week. Sure. That's probably yep. why the discrepancy. Um, six men, it, it made me laugh when Melbourne had two in there. You want to talk about the depth of Melbourne United, but yeah. just look at two guys in the running for our six man of the year. And he really has been incredible this year. And it was also, I believe, most improved. Most improved, I think Sam Froling's been a start this year. I think whoever has him for the next three or four seasons is going to eventually have a, a first or second team all NBL player. I love watching him play at both ends. He's probably not recognised for just how good of a defender he is, but he was really good for the Hawks in that third quarter when they made a run against the Wildcats and it started with his defence, block shots, pressure on the ring. Uh, and then when you come to the second team, there's always going to be a few guys that you know, must have only just out marginally. Daniel Johnson, mm. you know, I had in my second team. Uh, guys like Ty Webster probably had a few votes. Toddy Blanchfield you know, probably had a few votes. I thought Jarrell, Jarrell, Jarrell Martin votes. was the one that I found tough to leave out. Yeah, Martin definitely would have had votes. So, you know, I would love to see how close those types of guys came to it. But at the end of the day, congratulations to all 10 players. And like you said, that first team, I think it's unanimous. I don't think anyone can really make a good... Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of who they could be. The first person out of that second team, I don't even know how close they would have got to whoever had the fifth amount of votes in that oh, first team. Oh, yeah. I dare say I, those I, five I, guys. I agree, I agree. Yeah. yeah. They are well, well and above the best five players in the league, so I think they got it correct. Yeah, no, totally agree. I was, I was pretty happy overall as well. Um, now, Damo, very quickly, we'll do a full grand final preview with Matty Knight once we wrap this up, but give me your quick thoughts on how game one will go and how do you see this whole grand final series playing out? Well, the Wildcats have to keep it in the 70s. If they, if they get into the 80s and 90s, it's going to be a win for the, Wild, a win for the uh, Melbourne United. If the Wildcats play the type of defence, 40 minutes like they did in game in the second half against uh, Illawarra in game three. They, they're the genuine chance. Now, the only big unknown for me isn't what they're capable of doing defensively. They've been brilliant all year. It's who's going to step up and be that double-digit scorer mm. outside of Booney, outside of Blanchfield. And we probably, the Wildcats probably need two or three of those guys. So Nordo is an obvious choice. Clint Steinle can get going. Jesse Wagstaff can get going. With no Luke Travers, mm. he was always one of those ones who'd say, OK, outside of Nordo, Mooney, Blanchfield, let's go with Travers to be the fourth leading scorer. He's not there. So I think the Wildcats have to score in the mid to high 70s to be able to be a realistic chance. Where do those extra points come from is my biggest concern. At home, this team has done so many special things over a long period of time. And I'm biased. <laughs> and I love the club. A lot of former teammates on there. So I'm going to go to the Wildcats in game one. But it's a very, very, very good Melbourne United team. Best team on paper. Minor premiers for a reason. Very well coached. They are a fantastic team coming up against the Wildcats side, missing their best player and injuries to a couple of others. But it'd be very special if they can pull off what many say they can't. And in 11 championships, they go on to win if they win this. Mm. This would be, I think, the most impressive of all because of the adversity they faced all yeah. season with COVID, but in particular back end of the year without Bryce. Yeah, I think I think so completely. But in the end, we've got the grand final that we needed this season. I think it would have been disappointing if it wasn't these two teams playing off. So thanks very much for joining us, Damo, on Hoop Sevens Basketball Hustle once again. And we look forward to seeing you on our TV screens later on. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, Mikey. Welcome back to Hoops Heaven's Basketball Hustle. Now time for our Tap Touch preview with the Nightmare, Matty Knight, who will join me shortly, the three-time NBL Championship winner, to cast his keen eye over the NBL Grand Final Series. And, of course, 
This segment brought to you proudly by Tab Touch, one of our proud partners, and great to welcome them on board this season here on here on the show. Head to tabtouch.com.au for all of the betting markets, which includes this NBL Grand Final Series. So you can go on right now and take a look at all of the markets for the Game 1 of the Grand Final Series, which has Melbourne United as the favourites, thanks to Tab Touch, but you can have all sorts of... All sorts of a look at any type of market you like. So you can have a look at the game total, the winning margin, the half of full-time doubles, who's going to win the second half, the third quarters, if if the scores will finish up, odds or evens. You can have a look at the line betting. You can have wire to wire betting. You know anything anything you like. Player player performances, including um, who's going to who will be the top scorer, who'll get a double double, triple double, and Everything in between. So head to tabtouch.com.au. Thanks once again to their tremendous support here of the show at Hoop Seven's Basketball Hustle. Remember to gamble responsibly. And now let's get on get on to the one and only Maddie Knight. Okay, I'm now with Maddie Knight here on the Tab Touch preview. Maddie, how do we find you this week? Yeah, doing well, mate. Um another crazy week of basketball. It has been, it has been. Um let's go back quickly to have a look at those semi-final series. You, you must have been feeling pretty good about your prediction of a of a Hawks Hawks victory after game one, but ultimately trying to win twice in Perth was probably a bit too much for for the Hawks. Yeah, no, they did all the right things for the Hawks. Um, they broke that uh, thirty-four out of thirty-five loss. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm sure they would have been going home with a lot of confidence, but um, yeah, I think uh, Perth has got too much experience. I highly doubt they would. have Stress being down one nil. Um, well, they knew they had to get game two. Then you're coming back to Perth. So um, ultimately, uh, the Hawks had a fantastic season where they were 12 months mm. ago to now. Just shows you they're heading in the right direction. They've got the right personnel uh, off court and probably one of the greatest coaches of all time leading them. So they're only going to get better and better, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other the other series turned out probably a bit more fascinating fascinating than. We might have thought as well. Halfway through Game Three on Tuesday, the Phoenix were well on track to get to the Grand Final, but but Melbourne had to dig deep there. I mean, it would have been a massive failure if they didn't get to the Grand Final. So they had to dig deep, and and they just managed to to get over the Phoenix. Yeah, no doubt. But after Game One, you probably would have thought that may have been a tweak. But yeah. um, the Phoenix they got a lot of guys who just take a lot of pride out there. Um, it's very good. It was a fantastic game too. So. As you said, Game 3 was right up in the air. It was right up the air. So, um, yeah, it would have been a massive disappointment for Melbourne United if they'd uh, lost in the semi. But um, they found a way to get through. And I, I believe the two top teams are playing off the grand final, which is what you want. Yeah, I, I think we do have the grand final that we needed to have in the end. Um, now, since the semi finals finished, we also had the NBL Awards night. Some interesting results. Did anything sort of jump out at you that was a, a big surprise? Um, coach of the year, maybe. Yep. Um, just because of what George, I know he's got the reputation in that, but um, from where he's the Hawks were, like I said, the Hawks were 12 months ago, to finish his third and almost causing an upset in the semis. But um, obviously, Trez, he's done fantastic ever since he got to Perth, really. Mm. Um, so that was up in the air. Um, got Dean in there as well, but uh, the MVP, no, no, um, no surprise. There, yeah. um, player. I think they got that right. Yep. Um, six man. Uh, that was always going to be a tough one, really. But um, I think they they got all the award winners very uh, deserving. Yeah, I think so too. I don't think you can complain too much. Do you think Jock Landale had a very strong case to at least be one of the top three in the MVP voting, or were you happy for Sobi to be the third man that got put up? It's a tough one because. Toby had a fantastic season. Yeah. Obviously, out of Brisbane, probably well, we fell short of expectations. They had a horrible run of injuries. And they were on the road for a lot. Yeah. I remember yeah. catching up with uh, Melbourne Airport when I was there. And, um, yeah, they have been on the road for a while. But, uh, yeah, Toby deserved there. But um, I think the hurt job was that Melbourne was so deep. Mm. I think he only averaged like 23, 24 minutes yeah, a game. exactly. Yep. So if he was on any other team or played that 30-odd minutes, uh, who knows what his numbers would have been, and he's been fantastic in the final series now that he's 
playing more minutes. So, um, yeah, he's uh, had a case, but I think uh, just because of the depth of Melbourne United and the lack of minutes he played, probably hurt him in the end. Always love to pick your brains about the, the bigs as well. And the two leading most improved player candidates were Sam Froling and Jordan Hunter. And they're, they're two of the most exciting bigs that we've got in the league moving forward. Are you pretty impressed with what you've seen from both of those guys? Oh, definitely. Um, yeah, Sam Froling and Alan Leeds is down. And Jordan Hunter, to be honest, I really hadn't heard of his name yeah, much. But yeah. uh, every time, every time I uh, look on social media or read they're always talking about him, and they've both got a very uh, bright future ahead of them. And um, they have probably one of the dunks of the year in game one. <laughs> but, uh, Absolutely. <laughs> but, uh, but no, um, the future's very bright for uh, the NBL right now. It's got Lou Travis as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of bright uh, young stars coming through the NBL, which is great for basketball in Australia. Now, nothing against the guys that were tipped in, that were picked in the all all NBL second team, but I have a feeling you wouldn't mind playing against this team and backing yourself in to dominate a team that has Mitch Creek and Finn Delaney as the bigs, and then Chris Gold and Casper Ware and Mitch McCarron making up the team. I I wouldn't have I wouldn't be surprised if old Matty Knight wouldn't have backed himself to dominate that team. Yeah, no, I would have uh, got into post in that one. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, I mean, that's the way all awards are going now. As long as they have three guards, and they call them inside players now. So, mm. if you play a quarter of a game inside, you classify as an inside player. But the way basketball's played now, um, the days of mine are thrown into the post. It means the big guy go to work. Yeah, it has. Yeah. Obviously, Jock, you still do it. But, um, yeah, sports games now, it's pretty much four or five out basketball. It is. Even the bigs love to live outside the paint now, don't they? Yeah, exactly. It's all about the three ball and uh, between the rolls now. I'm trying to throw it in the post and play off the post. Um, I've probably struggled with today's basketball. Well, you you weren't too bad at shooting yourself. I still remember that game winner you hit against the Townsville Crocs. You, you hit it right in front of me. That was a that must be a highlight that you like to look back on. Oh, definitely. I remember when uh, Paul, uh, Paul Wilbur came to the assistant coach and the first thing he said to me, he goes, I still remember that memory you hit that three right. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I think it's the only three I've ever hit for the arena. <laughs> well, if, if, that, if that is the only one, it's not a bad memory to have, to have Matty. Um, now, the grand final series. It's the one we had to have, isn't it? I mean, it would have been ultimately disappointing after the dominance of the Wildcats and Melbourne United throughout the whole season if it wasn't these two teams playing in the grand final. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, we've been two top teams all year. I think it would only be better if Bryce was able to play. Sure. Then, yeah. Um, yeah, he deserved, the fans deserve to see Bryce Cox in the grand final series. Like, He's fantastic in the regular season, but he always seems to go to another mm. level in finals time. And um, I think if uh, Bryce was playing for Perth, then I think uh, Perth would be a clear favourite. But right now, it's a, it's interesting to see what the format is. First two games in Perth. Yeah. Um, if you want a big advantage Wildcats, you definitely got it. Um, win those two games, you go on the road until we win one more game. So Absolutely. Now... It's an interesting history. Now, obviously, usually it's the top-ranked team that gets to play game one, but obviously because of everything going on with COVID, it's different this year. So the Wildcats host the first two games, like you said, and history's on their side. So the teams that have won game one in a grand final series have won the last 12 championships and 23 of the last 24. Now, the rider on that is, of course, that this is the first time that the lower-ranked team has hosted Game 1 since 2001. But how much of an advantage is it to, to get get a winning start in a grand final series? It's massive. You always want to get that first win under your belt. You don't want to fall behind and then you're playing. You put more, there's more pressure on each game after that. Mm. But uh, like you said, the top team, they normally get the home court advantage. But to have two away games, it's probably, probably the one venue you don't want to play at. <laughs> Absolutely. In front of 12,000 uh, Red Army. But, um, hey, Melbourne and I, we can't have a lot of confidence. I believe being on the road brings you together. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got no distractions. I think it's put more pressure back on Perth. Um, pressure there. 
say, you've got to win at least one of the two. Otherwise, going back to... You have to think of be back in Melbourne. Maybe no yeah, crowds. But yeah, it looks like they will get to play in Melbourne, which is, which is a good thing. The NBL should have looked at going to a neutral venue, um, if this is the case. But like, they're unsure. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't mind even somewhere like Bendigo where they've played already this season and because it's a regional area in Victoria, we would be allowed to have a crowd there. I wouldn't mind that idea. Yeah, I was actually for that as well because uh, July we got 7,000 yep. yep. so you know, I'm surprised the NBL haven't looked at that but I obviously don't understand why because the, um, Perth have to come back to go quarantine but they, um, no matter what, you've got the first two games so I reckon Melbourne and I are becoming a lot of confidence. Um, obviously, Chris uh, Norton's played extremely well. So you've got um, Melbourne and I got weapons all over the court. Yeah. The, the, other po- the other positive for Melbourne is that they've won twice in Perth already. They haven't lost in Perth yet this season. If they win one of these two games, they'll become the first team ever to win three games in Perth in one season. So playing... Playing in Perth actually doesn't hold too many fears for them. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I um, see more and more Perth pizza players. They don't fear coming to Perth as much anymore. Yep. Um, I think a lot of players actually thrive on coming here and playing in front of such a big crowd. I think um, so. I think so. Especially now that we're not getting big crowds anywhere else, really, in the country. Exactly. So, they definitely... Um, yeah, I didn't know that. Today. If they win one game, that's the first team ever to win three yeah. first. Wow, yeah, like you said, they've won two in first, so they're bringing, they'll be bringing a lot of confidence. And um, they got battle tests in the semi-finals. Um, they're going to be interesting because um, Magne, I don't think he lives up to what first one from him. Mm. Um, and he's going to have a battle on his hands with uh, Josh. I want to talk about the Battle of the Bigs. Um, how important is it? Um, how, or how decisive will it be who has the biggest series between Jock Landale and John Mooney? But also, you've got the backups there as well. I mean, right now, Joe Lowell or Jill is giving a lot more to Melbourne than Will Magna is giving to Perth. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think the series, the big guys are having a big play in the uh, wins the final series. If Jock plays like he has in game one and three, to the semi final, um, I think the Hill Melbourne United go a long way. But um, John Mooney, he's had a fantastic season, averaging a double double. So there's going to be more pressure on him now with Bryce out of the picture. That's why I think Melbourne, they've got the depth. Unfortunately, Perth, I don't think that has delivered on um, all the hype he has. Yeah. Well, for someone that's spent most of the season in the NBA, he doesn't quite look like it, does he? I think um, what his strengths were before he went to the NBA was his athleticism. And we haven't seen that, have we? No. I think mean, it was the last game, 22 minutes, zero points. Yeah. Like, yeah, and obviously, he did make the final 19. So, um, they need him to be a that. shot blocker, don't they? They need him to be a real defensive presence, but he hasn't He hasn't been able to do that. No, that's why at first boys been successful that had that, yep. that shot blocker. Uh, when I was there, we had big names. Bill McKay, those guys yeah. protect the paint. Um, yeah, obviously that's what they brought him over here for, but um, he's got five games to turn around and show Brian Gorge that he got it wrong, or yep. uh, Gorge can say, look, I was right, my decision. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the good thing, it's not too late. Another fascinating nah. part about the grand final is that for the first time ever, we'll have both teams having a development player in their starting lineup, Mason Peatling. Has been a, uh, he's been terrific for Melbourne stepping up in that role as the foreman and and Luke Travers at the Wildcats in recent in recent times he's probably their probably their their third best player behind Blanchfield and, and Mooney. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, Travers has uh, he got the confidence. He started the season pretty well and he went through that white patch. But hey, what a time to turn it around! And the kid's got an exciting future ahead of him. Um, he he's playing with a lot of confidence and. Bryce going out, he's really stepped up his play. And then down the other way, you see another DP start. It's very rare to see that, especially two powerhouse yeah. teams like Melbourne and Perth to have a DP start in such big games. But it shows you that uh, basketball is definitely on the rise. And you rank in the 
Mr. Hay is so uh, um, they'll probably match up on each other at times too, so um, you know, it's very Absolutely, exciting yeah. to see two young players right, having such an impact in uh, big game basketball. Well, for somebody like you who's now coaching junior players and coaching the WA country under 18s team, how much does it help when you can then point to Luke Travis and Mason Peatling and these guys and show, look, all you need to do is get yourself at a development player spot and you can be playing in the NBL very quickly. It's, there's now a very clear pathway that that they can actually become an NBL player. Um, and and it's actually possible now as an 18 or 19 year old. Exactly. Um, yeah, it shows um, college is not the only route to yeah, yeah. the uh, NBA anymore. Um, you can earn a DP spot. Um, it takes a lot of hard work. I don't think a lot of kids realize how hard it work and sacrifice it is. Mm. But um, if you work your backside, I'll put it very high. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the DP player become captain, vice captain, and third wildcat. So, but if you want to work hard, and all it takes is one or two injuries. Bench players, and uh, you get that opportunity. It's what you do with that opportunity. You can take it with two hands, or the moment is too big for you, and take the chances. I think that's what Luke Travis and they have done is been given this opportunity, and they've grabbed it. And it's, uh, unfortunately, they're going to probably take one or two spots off guys before they're in the roster next year. Yeah, and even Corey Sherville, he's somebody that. He's good enough to be a full, fully contracted player as well, and it's all because of that chance that he's got as a as a DP. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think the struggle to keep Corey next year. I reckon there'll be a lot of teams knocking on the door, yeah. and with uh, that's the thing with first being so deep, it's hard to get those consistent minutes. Um, so you can always go to another team, um, get those more minutes, but or they hey, Perth try and um, go against some of the better players. And, show uh, Trev and that that you deserve those minutes. I want to get your thoughts on Jesse Wagstaff, a long-time teammate of yours, and he's about to become the first ever player to play in nine grand final series, which is quite incredible, and he has the chance to become the first ever player to win seven championships, and he'll be a championship captain for the first time if the Wildcats win as well. Um, he, he's the most unassuming character in the world, and he if you saw him away from a basketball court, you would never... Imagine that he's done what he's done in basketball terms because he, he just likes to be a normal person away from the court. Um, what are your thoughts on what he has the chance to now accomplish? Like you said, if you, see, if you didn't know Jesse away from basketball, you would not think he no. he's a, a six-time NBL champion, <laughs> six man of the year, the way he dresses, yep. his dress is <laughs> six balls, uh, um, I think he's had nine different hairstyles. Oh, absolutely. He's had a different hairstyle. Yep. But um, he's one of the greatest guys you'll ever meet. Um, he does the team thing. Whatever's asked, he does. He's a great leader for that locker room now, especially with the time game on Greg over the last few years. He stepped up and it'd be awesome to see Jesse uh, win a seventh title, especially the captain. It's been a pretty tough year. Mm. I think mean, a lot of people didn't have a make it. Then to go out and win it with seven time NBO seven for nine, not a bad <laughs> yeah. And two of those are pretty unlucky. Jamie Martin down in the yep. grand final yep. series, so he could have been nearly nine for nine. But um, <laughs> no, Jack is a, he's a great guy, and um, on and off the court, uh, I think he's got like ten different degrees. Mm-hmm. He's always studying, so he sees himself up and off the basketball court. But I asked him, is he going to go again? Got another hundred in him. I does. Well, I say he's at least got next season in him, at least, doesn't he? I mean, there's no, there's no sign of him slowing down just yet. No, you'd, you'd keep him as that backup four, and um, yeah, as that veteran leadership off the court. He doesn't have to play in twenty minutes. He can be ten to fifteen. He's still got the potential to come on and change the game. Yep. A couple of big threes, stops. So, hey, I'd be giving him another year. Now, you know all about playing in grand finals as well, Matty. You won three championships, and I think, was it two grand finals you, you lost as well? So you, yeah, lost back to back. Yeah, so you, you played in five grand final series during your career as well. So you know all about them. Um, how much does it change in a grand final? Um, how, how, how much does things go up to the next level once you get to that grand final? Yeah, no, it, it makes definitely right because you definitely play for that, uh, that big trophy, that championship. Um, 
intensity of it changes. Always you can play these teams four or five times yep. throughout the season. So, you know, you can tell it inside out. It's about going out and executing and following the team, uh, the plan. And if you do that, you put yourself into a chance. So, you get intensity. Sometimes, depending on the referee, the physicality mm-hmm. can go off a lot. But, um, but it's the most exciting time to play basketball. Um, very forced to play most of our game one and three in front of the first Red Army. You've got yep. 13,000 fans screaming at you. So you, you get excited. Um, it's what you do. And long pre-season for the long season, especially this year for the boys, it's a long yeah. season. So you want to make time and effort rewarded for coming out with the championship. Now let's get down to business, Matty. Who wins and what will be the deciding factors in deciding this championship? I think um, I think game one's massive. Yep. Um, whoever gets game one will have a pretty good chance. Yep. Um, especially with Mel, when you get game one, you know you've got three more coming back home. So, But I think uh, Melbourne, um, their depth and Bryce Cox factor. Yeah, sure. I just don't know if Perth have enough firepower to get to the shootout with Melbourne United. When you've got Jock, Chris, Mitch McCarran, Scotty Hobson, they've got Dent all over the court, West all over the court. So, Fish Norton had a great semi final series, but he can't guard four other players on the court. So, I think Melbourne in four. I think you, I think you make the the best point there. I, I just don't think the Wildcats can score enough points. You have a look at the semi final series; they didn't get to eighty points in any of those three games. And when Melbourne won, they they got to ninety six and they got to eighty four. I think I just don't think that the Wildcats have the potential to get beyond eighty points. And I think to beat Melbourne, you're going to have to get close to ninety points to win. Yeah. Also, the five game series it takes a toll. Yeah. Well, especially with Norton not 100% either. Exactly. And I was asking John, we need to play a lot of minutes. Yep. Melbourne can rotate big. They've done it all year. So you go against one guy, they'll throw another guy at you. So I just think they've got too much depth. So a five-game series, that becomes massive. You can bench really step up a different game. What does pressure do to you? I get the feeling that you take Bryce Cotton out of the Wildcats team, and this is almost a free hit at a championship, whereas for Melbourne United, they're expected to win. All the pressure's on them to win. Can that do funny things to you if you're expected to win? Definitely. Uh, like you said, first is not a free hit. Um, yeah, I don't think too many people are expecting them to win. Obviously, you got the first two games first, mm. but, um, yeah, Melbourne finished top. Got the, the stars on half side of the team, so I think the pressure's on Melbourne. But I mean, uh, you got the first two games in Perth, so really it's a free hit for Melbourne. Um, yep. Pressure goes back on the Perth. They're going to expect to win those two games. It's going to be fascinating, isn't it, Matty? Um, at any point when you watch a grand final series like this, do you wish you were back out there, or are you pretty happy happy watching back on back from your your lounge chair? Oh, no, you definitely the games you want to play in. Yeah. Um, I said the most exciting time, but uh, I'm quite happy to turn the cats now and watch. <laughs> this body wouldn't keep up anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, it's definitely exciting series. How's things on the home front, Matty? Um, and who have we got with you today? Who, who, who's, who's been helping you helping you out on this appearance on the on the show, show oh, today? Oh, God, uh, we're at the park right now, so I've got eyes to get um, Ollie, who's had a day at home, he's had a big week, so he wants a day at home. <laughs> okay. So they're just chilling in the park, and I've got Leo asleep in the brand. So making the most of beautiful weather before the cold comes on the weekend. How happy are you as a dad of three and you get to spend this much time with your kids, Matty? We've talked about the challenges that the teams have been through, and they've been away from their family for so long, a lot of them for so much of this of this year. Um how happy are you that you get to spend so much time with your three kids? Oh, I absolutely love it. Four kids, actually. Four kids, sorry. <laughs> sorry. sorry. Um, no, I love it, especially since I was Leo and Ivy, baby too. Um, I miss a lot with uh, 
beer and bowl in between on the road and that. So I can only imagine how hard it's been for the jet ski and that this year. Um, three kids at home, the lot of step to yeah. handle. But um, he do miss a lot, so I'm very thankful that I do get to spend a lot of time with the kids. And um, yeah, uh, even on weekends as a family, things like that. Things you took for granted when you play, um, get those times together or was very limited, but um, absolutely loving life right now. I think that's the the best thing that we've heard on the show this year, Matty. It's great to hear that you're in a in a happy in a happy place with your family, and I think everyone everybody else will be really happy happy to hear that. We've enjoyed all of your basketball insights, but to know that you're you're a, in a happy place in life, I think, is fantastic to hear. So that's probably a good note to end it for this week, and we'll come back next week either nearing the end of the grand final series, or we'll have a championship to to talk about, Matty. So thanks very much for your insights once again on the Tap Touch preview. Thanks for having me on, buddy. Okay, big thank you to both Damien Martin for joining me on Hoop 7's Basketball Hustle to start off this week's show ahead of the NBL Grand Final Series. And, of course, thank you just then to Matty Knight for providing us with the Tab Touch preview. As always, a big thank you to our partners, Boomerang, who brought you the Damian Martin Award for the Best Defensive Player all season long. So a big thank you to the best basketball equipment providers and installers in the, in the country. Make sure you check out Boomerang. If you need a basketball system, make sure you go and check out Boomerang. Thank you to TabTouch, as always. Head to tabtouch.com.au and for the best basketball apparel, shoes, whatever you need store in the country, Hoop7. If you're in Perth, check them out on Murray Street or head to hoop7.com.au. You will not be disappointed. But right now, our focus is on the NBL Grand Final. Game 1, Friday night at RAC Arena. Game 2, Sunday at RAC Arena. And then we're expecting the rest of the series to be played in Melbourne. Good luck to Perth Wildcats. Good luck to Melbourne United. Thank you for joining us here on Hoop7's Basketball Hustle and enjoy the hoops.